My struggle with depression has been something that I think uh, took me more time to actually find out about. I mean, I'm coming from the township. Uh, you, you don't really know about depression because information around depression is something else that many people don't talk about, especially among men. Um, I grew up you know, in a very poor background and um, you are confined to a very small space where you, you can only worry about you know, the lack that you guys face in the house. So you don't necessarily get to explore your other things that affect your psychological and, and, and your mental health. And so in my case, I, I've, been, I've always been a person who was more like a people's pleaser, uh, purely because I suffered rejection as a kid. And I grew up like that, you know, um, suffering rejection. And I would be very specific. Um, when I grew up, a lot of people thought I was ugly. Actually, they told me, they, they told it to my face that, uh, dude, you ugly. And um, this was a song that I was saying almost every day amongst friends. Some were very close to me. And that was for me something that I really couldn't cope with. I battled to accept myself the way I am. In 2007, I had this other lady who had uh, volunteered her time to talk to the kids in the township. And during the time, I had actually, during our session, I had not eaten for some time. So she wasn't aware of that. And then I collapsed. And then I woke up in hospital and she was still there. And then she just refused to go. And then we spoke and she said, look, more than anything else, I think you carry so much pain. I can see it in your eyes. And I just didn't understand at the time, but I couldn't speak properly. Um, I just started crying when, whenever she was talking to me. And she actually just kept talking to me, said, you're such a powerful young man, you're a giant but you have this pain that is just cutting across and blocking you from becoming this big giant that the world is yet to see. You have so much potential. I had no time to pause and be told that I had depression. Look, it's... I have, I remember when I was at VETS, I, I had planned to take my life. This was just after the exams. But um, as I was taking a stroll around campus, I went to Hillbro to buy a poison. They call it Ritex. And I was taking a stroll, and I wanted to actually take it next to um, a swimming pool so that when I'm done I can actually just fall in there. But for some reason, because I was good with a lot of people, a security guard showed up and he actually started the conversation around soccer. The second time it was easy because I wanted to use pills. Um, but they would not work. You know, I, I, I actually wanted to exceed the, the amount that had stipulated. I had took about six pills, sleeping pills. At the time, I had just been uh, discharged from hospital, so no one would actually know. Um, I remember I was coming back from Helen Joseph, but it just didn't work, you know. And I, I, I then somehow wanted to find a way to see that what is it that I can do, you know, to either stay alive or kill myself? And, but I got scared and then I sort of like tried and put it on pause after um, the second one when I was, uh, I was in Brixton, I remember. 
um, I just fell into a deep sleep. I think also having an incredible support from the colleagues, you know, who would always make sure that they call you, they are with you, um, made it easy for me. And a lot of people wonder and ask every day, why are you always at work? Dude, this is the only place that gives me peace. Outside this place, I, I find very little space to breathe. Up to recent, up, up to like very recent, I actually started telling myself that, you know what, I'm not going to let people define how I should look, how I should wear, or what should make me happy. And I think I've worked very hard to accept myself the way I am.